This is going to be one of the cheapest wall-mounted batteries. Lots of people like to look at all the instructions. We've got everything done. It was that simple. I'd like to have a few of these batteries. You can run your 120 and your 240 at the same time. These are not cheaply made panels. Okay, so the safest thing to do here is going to be to take this plate off the bottom. I would say get rid of the wheels, but I think I'm just going to take this whole plate off. Whoa! whoa. Oh. All right, this thing is just super heavy. Just don't want to damage it. Okay, so now we have this massive battery in the house finally, and this is where we're going to place it. This is the Ruixu 16 kilowatt hour battery. This single battery is going to be powering the critical things in this house. This Ruixu battery is going to be one of the cheapest wall mounted batteries you can find per kilowatt hour. This single battery is like putting three server rack batteries all in one. It is a huge space saver and can mount flush up against this wall. This is a 48 volt battery and it's made for 48 volt systems. Today we're going to be powering this battery up with a 6500 watt inverter by Sungold Power. This Sungold inverter is capable of running 120 volt or even 240. 6500 watts is going to be a great amount of backup power and for some cases could actually power a whole house. We're also going to be hooking four 440 watt Sungold solar panels to this system. That way we can always keep our battery charged. So we already have these four solar panels placed up on these 4x4 posts and this is how we will be powering this system by the sun. Anyone is going to be able to install a system like this. I think the hardest part was trying to get this battery up the stairs. We're going to do a very quick wiring and installation of the inverter, the battery, and the solar panels. It's always recommended that you put a piece of cement board behind your inverter. Put your two screws in. And remember, I put plywood behind this cement board so I'd have something to screw to. So basically, you're going to measure across here for the two holes on the inverter. That simple. Here we have the hookup for a generator. You have L1, L2, and your neutral. And here we have the load. The load means this is what we're going to power up our house with or our receptacle plug in our case. Number three is the grid. In other words, if you're going to back charge from the house, this is where your wires will be running to. Okay, so let me show you inside the inverter here, your positive wire from your battery here, your negative wire from your battery there, and then right here, you have four inputs for positive and negative, positive and negative. These are for solar panel inputs. From what I understand, you can put up to 10,000 watts of solar panels through these inputs. 5,000 on PV1 and 5,000 on PV2. Remember, a system like this, you're going to be able to run directly into the breaker box or a critical load panel. If you have an off-grid home or if you have an RV, you can run an RV receptacle plug. Okay, so I have to show you the features of this Ruixu battery. Number one, it's going to come with these huge cables. We're gonna run the positive and negative cables up through here and mount them to the inverter. So on the side of the battery here, what we have is the negative and the positive where the cables go. Below that, we actually have a DC breaker to turn the battery on and off. Keep in mind that this battery also has a 200 amp fuse installed internally. Having that built-in disconnect breaker is going to save you some money. So if you decide to bring power in from your home to back charge your battery, you'll have a breaker that's built into the Sungold inverter. Unfortunately for the solar panel inputs here, there is no disconnect breaker. But it's not that big of a deal. You'll just have to get a PV disconnect switch like I have here. That thing's waterproof and pretty cheap. I think it only runs around 30 bucks. Okay, we're gonna take our positive cable, stick it right up to the bottom here. Stick our screw in here, get it started. Same thing with the negative.
Okay, so here is the negative and the positive. So we'll take these connectors here, clip in the negative, take the positive, do the same thing. Now, right here out of the wall, we have the wires coming from the solar panels, a positive and a negative. We're gonna run this positive and negative up into PV1 positive and PV1 negative. Push it up into PV1 negative. Now we only have one set of solar panels outside or what they would call one string. So with that being said, we're only gonna use the PV1. If we had another set of solar panels out there, we would use PV2 also. Okay, if you're like me, you do not like to read the directions, but with this inverter, it has split phase or 240 volt uh, slash 120 volt, whichever one you decide. And I need to set the settings in the inverter to where it's only going to push 120 volts in my application. With that being said, I'm also looking to see how they want me to wire it. Okay, so we're gonna be using this plug here for the grid. We're going to be wiring the grid into L1, neutral, and ground here. And we're gonna leave the L2 uh, unused because we are doing just 120 volt on this system. Same thing here on the load. We're going to use the L1, the neutral, and the ground for our plug receptacle that we're gonna mount here on the wall. Okay, so now we're wired in, and this wire right here will plug into the wall. And when we do that, the ground from the house here is gonna be running through this system here. So with that being said, we're not gonna be using any other type of ground on this system except the one that's for this house. So here we have our 15 amp plug here with the 15 amp GFCI. We're gonna be using that for our voltage coming out of the inverter. All right, here we have some six gauge wire and we're gonna be running it up here through there into our load. Again, give everything a good pull. Make sure nothing is going to come out. Everything is tight. Okay, so we're going to put our receptacle right here where it's easy to access. And we're just going to mount it to the wall. So now we're ready to turn everything on and see how it all works. So first thing, is we turn the switch on right here on the battery. We make sure that the battery powers up here. There it is. It's sitting at 52.9 volts, 67% charged. That's the way it's going to come when they send it. Next thing is flipping the breakers on here. Those breakers are now sending the 52 volts up into the inverter. Now let's turn the inverter on. There it is, the inverter is powering up. So far so good, nothing has blown up. Let's turn on the solar panels outside and see if we have any power coming in. This right here indicates the solar and nothing's coming in right now because we have the disconnect switch outside off. We are showing 53 volts here from the battery. The inverter actually just kicked on. And yeah, AC inverter is now blinking, but we have no charge and we have no faults. If you would be so kind <laughs> as to go turn my uh, switch on out there for the solar panels, you just lean over the porch there and turn it on. That would be great. All right, so first thing, let's just make sure we got power coming to this receptacle. 120 volt, we're good and 120. If you want to make sure that you're running this in 120 instead of 240, you are going to go to setting, uh, I believe it's number 30, no, it's number 68. And when you set it to zero, you are on 120. And when you see it on 180 here, it's going to mean that you are on 240. So. We are running everything in 120 volt here on a single phase. Right now we're just getting in eight amps. Um, still a 67%. 
and uh, the power says that uh, 420 watts is coming to the battery so you know we are towards the end of the day so we'll check the wattage tomorrow on it and see if we can get more wattage to come in okay we've got everything done it was that simple positive and negative coming in from your battery positive and negative coming in from your solar panels the power coming out from the inverter going to a plug receptacle and then you have your power that is going to be going in coming from the wall to back charge it when your solar panels can't keep up okay so what we've done here is we hooked up a microwave a toaster and we've hooked up this heat gun so we want to kind of see what this inverter will actually pull okay the first thing we're going to do is try the heat gun here and it's saying it is pulling 1500 watts i don't know if you guys can see that 1.5 kilowatts there on the right hand side the next thing we're going to do is turn on the microwave here It looks like that microwave is pulling right at 1500 watts or 1400 watts. Okay, once again, pulling 1300 watts on the microwave. I just kicked the toaster down. Now we're at 2000 watts. And while being at 2000 watts, we're going to go ahead and kick on this 1500 watt heat gun. There's 3500 watts. Still going. Looks like the microwave cut off and brought us back down to 2300. So we'll try to kick the microwave on again. And there's our microwave, brought us up to 3500 watts again. Okay, so the last thing to do now is going to be to put the cover back on the bottom here. So let's get that done. I'm going to go ahead and close the cover back here for the breaker, <clears throat> being that this is a waterproof battery. Um, it's able to sit, I guess, in the outside elements. Um, and uh, everything kind of has a seal on it. So... This is one of the things that has a seal around it here on this breaker. These are sealed for water. These are sealed for water. Even the battery management system is behind this cover here and it's sealed also for water. Okay, so let's go over what we have here. We basically have us a nice little backup system. 6,500 watts worth of inverter. Basically a battery capable of producing 16 kilowatt hours. Remember that's about the same as three server rack batteries. And then we have our output here for the appliances that we want to use during a power outage. And then we have our solar panels here. They do have a UL certification for fire safety. These panels will run you about $1,150. Panels with certifications like that are able to be ran on grid tie and off grid situations. These are not cheaply made panels. They're going to have a higher quality. Okay, let's talk about the features of the battery real quick. Communications. I was able to get this battery to communicate with the Sun Goal inverter with no problems. This battery is able to communicate with almost any inverter. I just changed the inverter setting to SRNE and they were able to communicate immediately. Each battery is 16 kilowatt hours. This battery is capable of being paralleled with 32 batteries total and can reach a maximum of 257 kilowatt hours. That's big enough to be dipping into commercial applications. Then we have our battery indicator here that tells us our state of charge. And of course our onboard LCD touchscreen. And this thing actually has a fire suppressant inside. Let's not forget about our quick plugs here. And remember this Lithy 216 can be mounted against the wall here. It can be mounted up under a rack against the wall that's sold separately, or you can just leave it on the wheels. It just depends on your application. Of course, in my application here, I had to take the wheels off. Remember, we have the battery maintenance and inspection port here on the side and a clear access to our battery management system. The battery is also equipped with intelligent balancing, and this is also a self-heated battery, and it is a waterproof battery. Now, this isn't something that you want to put directly into the weather, but it's something that can survive just fine indirectly. This is a battery that I really recommend 
and I would like to have a few of these batteries to be honest with you. First, this inverter will take 10,000 watts of solar panels. This thing supports two solar inputs for two solar arrays. This thing will do single phase or split phase, which means single phase is 120 only, or your split phase means you can run your 120 and your 240 at the same time. It has the connections under here for the USB, RS-485, and of course CAN. This thing is also equipped with the two charging modes, the solar coming from outside, or we have our plug here from the shore power. The features of this 6500 watt inverter, in my opinion, are pretty cool. So what do you think of this system? I think it's a pretty good matchup. If you are interested in purchasing this exact system, I will leave the links to these three pieces of equipment in the description of my video. 